the HR person's mind and which is on Metaverse. But before that, let me introduce you to what Vantage Circle is all about. Vantage Circle is a decade-old company which is working relentlessly on global employee engagement platforms. It is currently helping more than 600 companies to provide the best employee experience by using simple and easy rewards and recognition solution, employee experience analysis, and employee wellness solutions. They have organized Vantage Point webcast to help the HR community to tap the knowledge and experience of top-level HR leaders and address few of the latest problems which are faced by the HR world. In this first episode of Vantage Point webcast, we are here to discuss the latest problem, the metaverse, and the impact on the newer, the new age HR, HR people. And we have an absolutely brilliant team sitting here, which is going to discuss, and I'm sure it's going to be a highly enriching experience. Dr. Azal Malia needs no, 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 no introduction. One of the greatest minds HR has ever produced in this country, Dr. Tanaya Mishra and Dr. Ravi Chandran Paniyapur. I'm going to give you a brief introduction of each one of this. Adil, one of the top minds in HR today in the world, one of the top 10 HR leaders in the world, has over four decades of experience, currently the CEO of the company, The Firm. He's a top management corporate. He's got a top management corporate experience across companies like Godrej, GE, Marks and Spencer, Coca Cola, SR, and has been on the boards of several companies worldwide. Adil has experience in corporate working areas of law, industrial relations, human resources. His marketing, organization development, and HR technology is his passion. He's a regular at, at the various forums, institutions, or educational institutions, government bodies. He's a TEDx speaker and is a national award winner across a national and international award winner across several HR platforms. He's a HR grandmaster and an award winner for the World HR Day Congress. He is an absolute guru at this at this place in, in HR. And of course, I'm happy to say that because he's also one of my mentors. He's he's my mentor when it comes. I I I actually in my capacity of, as a strategic advisor, advisor to Vantage Circle, requested him to be a part of this because if he's on this the committee, the, the, the people who are here would, would get a fairly enriching experience and a great insight on what. Then we have Dr. Ravichandran. Dr. Ravichandran is a technology wizard. He's a chief product officer at Adrenaline eSystems Limited, which is an HRMS platform. He has more than two decades of experience and an entrepreneur, senior technologist, and HCM product specialist, proficient in formulating and executing product strategy, which includes product management, delivery management, product pricing, product communication, and business growth, an absolute wizard in the HR technology space. Thank you. And last but not the least, we have Dr. Tanaya Mishra. She is the global CHRO at Strides Pharma. Life Sciences. Tanaya is currently the global CHRO there, but she has unique and diverse experience across her career of more than two and a half decades. She has been, she's worked with companies like Accenture, SR, ACC Limited, Chopper Stop, SBI Life, and was last before this the senior vice president of Group HR at JSW. She has recently been invited on the executive council member of the world's most powerful network for women across the globe. People Matters in its current edition identifies her as one of the 40 most influential and aspirational HR leaders of Asia. So we have a solid team here, which is going to discuss the most important question, which is in the minds of all of us here, all HR leaders across, this, across the world. Before wasting any more time, I'm going to take you straight into the, 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 you know, the session as we have already lost. And, 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 and the funniest part is that we, we are talking technology. And the very reason why we lost this time, 20 minutes is because we couldn't connect and technology was the only hindrance. So what does technology has to offer us? And I'm going to go straight to Adil and ask him, how will metaverse unfold and transform enterprises 
in times to come. Adil, over to you. So thank you very much, Kostub, for saying all those wonderful things. If we, at some point of time, you said in the introduction that metaverses were a problem, and I would say metaverses is the end state of the future. It's not the problem. The problem is the transition and how we are going to make the transition to metaverse. Metaverse is a reality of internet. It is the next wave of digital disruptions. It's the next stage of inter- uh, internet with interaction. And the two worlds that would open out a digital world where your Mimi would be introducing me if I was to go into a kind of a webinar like this. So your Mimi would introduce my Mimi for all I know and all the participants would have their gadgets to try and see that, uh, this webinar. So that's the kind of state because most people currently do not even understand what is Metaverse, okay? So Metaverse Metaverse for a minute is a virtual world, the virtual world of coexistence between the real world and the digital world that is going to exist, which will interact with each other and will give you so much more flexibility to be able to do what the challenges not only of life would be, but business would be also. So the interaction between the physical world in which you live and the meta world that you will live on. All right. So that's the kind of situation I'm in. Now, the question that you have asked is that how will it unfold and what will the transformation do? Now, the most important thing is let's understand what are some of the challenges that our current businesses face and how will metaverse if it comes into its full stage? Because metaverse to arrive at will be through various stages of different technologies as they will emerge and how these technologies would get uh, you know, integrated into one to be able to take us to the metaverse stage. All right. So let's understand. Number one is currently we were all having and we all have locational limitations. You operate from maybe Bombay. I operate from Bombay. My clients operate from America. Someone operates from Abu Dhabi and things like that. So if you had the world of metaverse, the locational limitations, the boundaries, the travel time, the travel cost, all of that would be zero. And that would be a great advantage that would come to business. Imagine a world where these kind of limitations of time space would not be there. Second is market. You know, today we are still limited with the physicality of the market and its boundary lines. Of course, we send people out and we do. So we are in the interim stage of digitization. So we are able to do some, but it would be a seamless get into the market and the speed at which you will be able to get into the new markets would be amazing. So if Meta was to come, Imagine you could reach any market, say in Kremlin, in the next one hour and you'll be able to do business in a metaverse uh, market uh, of that time. Employee flexibility, you won't have to uh, limit yourself to the kinds of people who are operating in one particular geography. You could have people operating from any geography at any given point of time with huge amount of time, energy, diversity and flexibility that you are looking at. And they could all be integrated into one common value chain through a series of what we call blockchains. And those blockchains would integrate them. So that is going to be a great advantage that for all you know, your customers could enter the blockchains of human resources and be able to interact with people. And that's the kind of advantage businesses would have. Dimensional breakthroughs you would be able to have. So for all you know, when you are sleeping in the night in India and the European markets are operating, your Mimi could actually be transacting with your customers in the night whilst you are sleeping in India. And next day morning, the integration of the two would happen. So imagine what could be the situation. Today, you would either have to keep awake or go to sleep at the morning hour when you have done the work in the night. But in the metaverse, actually, there could be you actually in your digital avatar doing the work in the metaverse time and space whilst you are sleeping in India next day morning integrating what the outcomes are. What is important is quick market intelligence through a common public or private blockchains that would be developed and therefore metaverse would give you that advantage. You don't require full-time presence at any point of time. So if you were to look at five distinct advantages which businesses would have with the onslaught and the oncoming of metaverse, One would be boundaryless, seamless uh, ability to work because the markets would be seamless and boundaryless. Second is it will lead to efficiencies. Third, it will be a world of speed because it can go, Metaverse will get you into the new markets and new world at a speed. It will be fast, it will be flexible. And most important is the digital world will be interconnected with your physical world such that actually you will be operating at multiple dimensions, initially two dimensions, but thereafter multiple dimensions, all of which could be integrated to make this world a beautiful world. So that's the kind of situation that Metaverse will transform the businesses into. Wow, this is—it this, really sounds very exciting. Uh, it, it takes me back to my childhood where we used to watch serials like Star Trek and Star Wars where 
you could see transition of 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 an individual from one place to other within minutes so we 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 it 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 seems great but i don't know how it holds good for uh, how how good it holds for the new age hr people and what is the trans- transition that they need to make and how this technology is changing let's go to our technology expert dr ravi chandran doctor how do you think that technology has always brought in disruption you know that we know that technology has always been a disruptor mm-hmm. how do you think that metaverse will re- reframe human centered experiences so cost to buy will only take one minute before he answers and because you pointed out in 1992 uh, neil stephenson actually developed a scientific fiction novel called snow crash in which first time in that scientific novel of fiction the concept of metaverse was introduced and now we see the reality happening in real time wow. yeah <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Gaurav. Thank you, everyone, for having me here. Uh, <clears throat> it's certainly a kind of a good experience talking with uh, industry leaders here. So, to answer the question, like you know, um, reframing the human experience. First of all, when we talk about human beings, you know, it is all about you know the experience what they gather. Um, for example, when they travel, uh, they travel by train, they travel by flight, uh, on route to the uh, airport, they will go by cars. see the roads they experience what they gather and even when they go for a shopping they have to go into the mall or any shops where they experience it by touching a product seeing it and then getting an experience of how it looks how it feels and all that so likewise we talk about the experience of human being uh, it's it's a multi fold where it's not only one uh, even learning is an experience even meeting with other people is an experience playing a game is an experience uh working work, going for work and an experience what one gets in the workplace is also an experience so how does it matter here like you know, why we are talking about experiences here is the context in what uh, we would like to set in context of the metaverse metaverse is something as what dr rajul has very rightly you know detailed about you know the uh, virtual reality the virtual world uh, brings in a kind of a different experience to the human beings here uh um, entire metaverse concept has been built around human beings it is it is only for human beings actually if you, if you ask me that is the only thing has been built for so uh human beings have a desire to do many things but uh, with the limitation of time with the limitation of you know uh, resources and the accessibility and many other things where today they are got stuck up with only what they have for example if one has to go to the office and then come back home then spend some time with the family i don't know that's all like if they have to plan for a vacation then it's a big time they have to plan uh, they have to do a, a bigger planning like you know there's, there's a cost involved there's a, a vacation already has to be approved all these dependencies comes into the play like so how about you know transforming uh, you know this particular scenario to a scenario where i want to get an experience right now uh, by going to switzerland or i want to be in melbourne watching my boxing day uh, cricket match or something like going to a shop and buying a product so the human experience <laughs> has a desire like not to do immediately and then and there and also more to be cost effective so this metaverse is going to change uh, most of the experiences what human being are going through uh, go through day in their life um with with the uh, technology like you now coming in uh, the virtual reality the augmented reality the iots and the uh, cryptocurrency is going to be there um the entire thing is going to be transformed so when we talk about reframing the experience um most of the things going to be virtual uh, even the currencies what we are going to be using it's going to be digital uh, because uh, metaverse is going to be operated using cryptocurrency and uh, that's where the blockchain coming in and you know the blockchain is where uh, the, the the security is being more enforced there and people you know the decentralization is already enforced in blockchain so human beings are going to feel more empowered rather than like you no know, be a consumer now in this uh, world of uh, metaverse uh, when i say empowered uh, there is no dependencies of like hierarchy is coming in or there is a central body which is governing you know a certain a certain certain areas so when the experience is going to be like a peer to peer a kind of a if i create a virtual space i can decide who and all can be there in the virtual space and that virtual space when i join in they can also join in i can do a trading there i can do a, a digital purchase all these kind of experience going to be there so most of the time i think like no we are in 2022 now in 2024 or 2025 like no no wonder like how we are carrying a mobile device today 
uh, we'll be like no no wonder like we'll be having an headset uh, with a kind of a metaverse device going to be like no we are going to wear it and we'll be connected that's that's the kind of a situation and a scenario what i foresee and that's what you know the transformation will happen for human experience over to you uh, wow wow So, can uh, I give you an example? Yeah. Can I give an example? Sure. sure, absolutely. Today, when you go to buy a shirt online, you want the shirt in America. You know your size. You will order it online. Then make some payment gateway. You will make your payment through that. Mm-hmm. You don't know when the shirt comes in here. You don't know it may not fit you. After wearing, you may not like it. Imagine a world where you are entering the shop. You like a shirt. Your mini has your entire dimensions onto it. It goes and tries the shirt. You see your exact face because your mini is your twin replication. You wear the shirt and then you say, "Does it look good?" Or the other shirt looks good. And then if you like it and it's your right size, you do a digital currency payout and it's over. You know, he gets the payment immediate transaction over. Shirt gets transported onto you. That's the kind of world we are looking at. Absolutely, fabulous. you know i i doctor you spoke about uh, the cricket match at in 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 melbourne and other there is there is an actual replica of shane won in the melbourne cricket stadium where he yeah. interacts he, he interacts with you <laughs> and that's where you get to, you you actually believe that it's it's shane won who's interacting and he's actually teaching you <laughs> how to bowl the leg spin and that 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 was that was and that that has been created about a decade back so i guess it it would now have it would go further up uh tanaya coming to hr you you have been an expert practitioner for over over so many decades and and you know with metaverse coming in and if it is an hr uh the, the hr function embracing it how do you see if your the transactional roles in hr vanish over the next decade or so and how do you recommend hr function function reimagine itself and its existence actually so um let me first come to the basics i've been part of the teams which have actually uh, in accenture who have actually worked on uniqlo as a brand and uh, uh, ford as a brand where we this is a uh, 2000 odd uh, you know the year 2000 where actually we saw the shapes and sizes of the colors changing uh, really uh, so it is it is really a virtual and augmented reality which is a 3d vision right so uh, for new age human resources professionals i think it's about uh, the disruption in the digital uh, world it is not something which is very scary because let's also understand that you know adil was very positive but i have been on the other side where i've actually seen a lot of technical glitches uh, and a lot of uh, hackers who come into the system because uh, you know the more and more you get into the internet the more and more it is about the the dark web uh and you know there are the black hats and the white hats so as far as human resources is concerned i think it's an ideal way yesterday i actually looked uh, uh, at a tool called meet averse which is a uh, which is uh, which has also been tried and tested in iit so i think what it does is for the uh, human resources i think it's it's a great tool to have in terms of engagement because uh, you know with the covid coming in we've had a lot of hybrid workforces so in terms of meet and greet uh you know that would be absolutely right there engaging what this meter verse uh, tool showed me was you know it has already done for companies like citibank and sapora where you can ideally create counters and booths so it means that you can get employees together to you know for instance as one you know one set of employees who wants a different thing to be done maybe they want uh, you know something to do with about reading some people want to have fun some people want to do something else so you can actually sectionize it and it's uh, you know while you can do it on a zoom or teams but the fact is that this is a virtual reality which gives you a 3d uh, effect of of you actually being present there you can walk around and stuff like that so i think it's about how do you reposition yourself and what are some of the uh, the things that you can do but the first thing that i think which will uh, which will which is a big thing for us in the human resources one is engagement two is training will it kill kill a few of the roles in hr tanaya well if you are a very heavily loaded company you know which you know which has five people for engagement because look every organization today has rethought its its hr strategy and has actually said you know do we have the so the, the spans and layers of the banding exercises have already been done so i think it's about rejigging um 
the the way the human resources is 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 currently but i don't think too much is going to change so i would like to be very positive and say that people are not going to lose their jobs i think it's going to get more and more interesting as you get more tools to play with and and to be up there in terms of technology absolutely i agree great i agree with you sir okay No, fact, uh, I, 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 I think it's like not cost so we had international <laughs> events where you know remember star trek and you could actually see this guy transposition so we did have these events which were you know some could be transposition and this was the year 2015 2007 2017 is i've seen these events happen so uh, it's not something which i've not seen and uh, and experienced so that's that's great great i think i think it's it's good to have some disagreements here as well on the panel which is so you know guys with so many doctors around i think there are there are 256 registrations already there and there are so many 256 people watching us live today and uh, i think they they're going to take that there is a lot of take away here for every each one of them so adil just uh, you know taking on from where tanaya left do you think employment terms are going to change over the next few years do you think talent engagement talent management and rewards will require a massive change uh, through this process because uh, soon hr as a as as a function might just you know uh, uh, you know uh, why why you said you disagree so how do you see the hr function being reimagined uh, in in these coming years so uh, you know i will take it from that same point and i was hoping you would ask me as to why am i disagreeing with her she is a very dear friend of mine and i can disagree with her but there is a logical disagreement i have with her you see look at the current hr jobs of the people around the world now the hr jobs comprise at any point of time with two parts there is a science to the hr and then there is an art to hr now everything that is transactional which is routine management which is administrative of nature which is repetitive of nature which is procedural and practices which can be built into logic and algorithms all of that will go away take my word for it all of that will go away because there will be sufficient amount of technology available which can be programmed to take over the transactions the routines the administrative parts of it uh, the, the 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 leave management part of it what you label as the administrative part for any role what will therefore go away are all the jobs in the hr organization which are science based job which can be put into algorithms what will really remain is the jobs which are the art of hr which means jobs which deal with the human resources the people the elements of emotion the strategic part of it the insights the empathy the 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 touch and the smoothening of the situation as it happens because those you will never be able to put into any kind of algorithmic applications so people where they bring in the strategic real analytical kind of thing which is not based on routine scientific operations of algorithms will go away but those which are based on human touch human empathy human sympathy uh, uh, smoothing hand holding those jobs which are the art of hr those jobs will continue to remain and that's my analysis in this science so will art will remain i just add uh, cost to that uh, if you look at it we've already had something cost of you were you were an sr and and while you've not introduced yourself we've known you to be a, a tall hr leader yourself you know we have shared services already you know uh, standard chartered bank started it with scope so we already have identified it's not like you know we've not identified the the mundane routine jobs which we have sometimes outsourced and sometimes we've had shared services so adil i agree with you completely that uh, you know some of the jobs which are uh, you know mundane or routine or have a scientific background will go away because what you're going to do is you're going to re- you're going to represent it with a, an ai tool which is obviously or a blockchain tool which will be able to do it in a mass production but i also agree that you know the touch points which are empathy engagement learning uh talent uh, all of that definitely with high no, touch points learning will go even tanaya learning will go with augmented reality and machine learning yeah but there's going to be different type you still need somebody to to do these uh, you know to impart the behavioral part of it while you know yes you can have a tool which will probably you know will will tell you that okay this is what it is and you we already have to be to be to be fair we already have digitized learning programs the lms systems are available so it's not like it's not there but you still need somebody 
to to convert it to what you want because one size doesn't fit all so so i think that the the human approach will continue sorry uh, for butting in cost go ahead please absolutely no no actually not you know tana i i was to come to you but uh, let me go to dr ravichandran uh, because this was this was this was getting into a very interesting area so dr uh, you know while we we can see that there are several jobs at stake and there are several people who are currently at 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 the cusp of you know deciding what to do and what not to do looking at human resources as a career over a period of a few few years there are people who are graduating and there are people who have been decades into their jobs now and they are working on this transaction stuff and there are and if you look at it 43% of india still uh, they they still work on pen and paper and 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 there are a lot of people in the hr function who are still in those roles which we so call transactional now is metaverse killing those those roles is it actually killing and it or is it encouraging upskilling will it mark the death of the traditional way of doing business of or doing hr at least and managing people uh, an interesting question uh, kaushik see um uh, metaverse certainly encouraging upskilling like you know, let's let me put it very straight like now let's not beat around the bush actually. um because the predecessor to meta metaverse like you know on the upskilling we all experienced and gone through like you know, last two two and a half years with with the covid 19 where it really changed the manner in what you know the work culture was there and like you now we going to office and working and then it it created a lot of job opportunities as well we all know the great resignation happened uh, recently like now going on still uh, hiring people was a great challenge and you know then what happened like you now uh, people started to uh, move on to the latest technology as quickly as possible like so the medium for that is like you no know, they have to upskill the earlier so what is the medium for that so we all know that edtech technology has grew like you no know, very faster in india and globally also very faster uh, but the role of metaverse is going to encourage more and more on these aspects because when we talk about learning it is not only uh, people most of the time the mind is around you know the technology learning is what the learning is all about not really uh but when we talk about learning take an example of a medical student like you now when he wants to learn or upskill let's for, for a moment talk about the skilling now not about, not even about the upskilling now so if someone has to learn on the medical thing like you no know, uh, where the medical student they need a cadaver to start you know understanding it bisect and dissect and see what is inside for a moment let's have the virtual world where everything is going to be in front of them and you know with the virtual reality uh, based in all the human organs are there so they can easily understand by looking at it so certainly and one more advantage they're going to get is in the meta world of metaverse they can even perform uh, that's the kind of a direction what it's going they can even perform a trial surgery if at all they want to do an art surgery like Absolutely. they can do trial surgery uh, even if a trial surgery fails like you know, they can learn by doing it actually like you cannot do that on a real human being like you know, you'll be like you know, killing a person then so if if that is the kind of <laughs> what the metaverse is going to bring in then upskilling is certainly a, a big big advantage you know going to be brought into the human man the human kind actually like you know, for the mankind um having said that the learning is something where uh, it's going to be a, a big big change uh, coming into uh, with the, with the uh, ad, ad advancement of metaverse and what uh, dr tanya tanya said um see it is not only the learners are now going to be upskilling also the creators the content creators it is it is their role is going to be very significant in this kind of a world where because metaverse is a it's all about 3d objects it's all the dimensions everything is going to be created the actual contents has to be created and curated according to it so there is a job role going to be created for them there is a, also an upskilling going to be you know uh, you know benefited by the consumer of it actually so uh, i i would certainly say it is not a death of you know something which is you know the traditional thing that will also exist in a different format it is a format which is going to change um, and also extension to the format is the roles the newer roles like you know the uh, the uh, the object creation the the creation the, 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 the virtual uh, reality glasses all these will be a new inclusion going to come into the industry where it is going to be extended further than what it is only the format may be changed here and there not really the roles will be the same uh, the format will change is what the understanding and what my my submission to the uh, to the forum here actually ravi chandra what happened to the classical 
uh, token, the attendance uh, system, uh, boys who were employed in companies, the pewns who used to carry files in the organization, uh, those who were marking attendance on those tokens in the plant. Over a period of time with the coming of some basic technology, those jobs vanished and other jobs substituted by that. So the world will come when slowly these technologies will, it will not be a one stroke bullet hitting, but it will over a period of time as as it gradually moves in, all these jobs will go away. Where the pure art of human resources management, where people connect with people, where people touch the emotions and empathize, those are the kinds of jobs that will finally it is. It is. I certainly agree, uh, Dr. Razalia. But, but when we talk about the, the punch card systems, which used to be the attendance register and all, the technology advancement, like you know, the, the record keeping moved into a digital sign in, uh, biometric devices. All these advancements have been brought in. Now, now the world is moving towards an area of uh, the trust where the metaverse is bringing in. Yes, those jobs will move on. Like, but over a period of time, Ravi, you won't need attendance. Why do I need attendance? attendance. I'm, not talking, I'm, I'm not talking about attendance here. I'm talking about a presence here. I'm yeah. talking about a presence. Like, you no, know, the presence is going to be marked. It is not the attendance. Like, how in which format I'm going to be marked? In which avatar I'm going to be coming in? And which avatar I'm going to be participating in? Is the transformation is what I'm you know, talking about. <coughs> Attendance is a mundane thing. Even nowadays, like you now, we we are into HR tech uh, solutions where we are already like you know, we have customers like 26 verticals today now, where some of the verticals of the businesses already like you not know, done away with uh, you know, uh, attendance. They said no, we don't want attendance at all. As long as the employee you know productivity is like you no know, captured, I'm fine. Thank you very much. So that is the kind of you know direction in what moving, but to to to. To transform that to, to that extent, you know, it's a transformation is what I'm talking about, where the digital medium like you know, Meta was coming in, it will be much more advanced in the manner and certain things will exist in a different format. Actually, That's what my point is putting across to the, to the forum here, actually. Got it. Makes sense. So actually one question uh, with, uh, out of, uh, you know, uh, for both of you, Adil and to Tanaya, uh, and Tanaya can start basically, is there are a lot of students on the forum. And what do you re- and the education systems in India need to change in line with what 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 the new age technology is? How do you think the HR managers of tomorrow are being trained at these education institutions? Do you think they need to be you know undergoing a lot of change? The curriculum needs to be relooked at, or, or because uh, if you look at most of the curriculum across Indian universities, they have been the same for the last fifty years, with a few here and there universities which you can pick, but otherwise. They have not changed. Uh, Tanaya, over to you. Okay, so before I begin, I just want to butt in to the conversation which we were having. Look, today, uh, you know, geotagging was there even before. So companies, you know, which want to be suspicious can still have geotagging and, you know, uh, really find out if if people are uh, present or not. I mean, there are, uh, even before COVID, uh, a lot of companies were hybrid. I mean, I worked from home uh, for four days or, or sometimes uh, constantly for a month if I didn't have a meeting, you know, in my in my erstwhile organization. So I think uh, uh, it, it's about also, you know, the software identifying whether you logged in or not, although you really don't know whether there is an attendance or not. Uh, coming to the overall curriculum, I think uh, a lot of organization or a lot of institutions have started changing, but they're not in line with, uh, the trends. So although there are a lot of forums where there is an institutional and industry or academia industry uh, congregation and, and a lot of people like us sit on boards, but I really think that, uh, you know, we need to develop and just like we are saying, um, I think it's also about, you know, we talk about CSR. I think we need to have our young ones into a kind of a, a corporate giveaway for our youngsters or future citizens. And we could have AI platforms where leaders like all of us here, including yourself, Kostar, are able to educate as to what is the industry trend. And it is really something which can be done. And I'm surprised why in organization or institutions are not doing it. Because, look, ultimately, these are the students who are the future employees of, uh, of any organization. So I'm surprised as to why institutions are not approaching organizations or organizations are not approaching institutions. Of course, wherever there is mass, you know, whether it is retail or insurance, we do go in and, you know, give give them a, a certain curriculum saying this is what we want. 
and this is the syllabus and we will go in and 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 have but i think you know today with ai coming in or even for that matter metaverse like i said we could definitely have this augmented reality where you know people or professionals spend a little bit of time for the youngsters because what happens is it helps corporates because the learning curve becomes that much more shorter and instead of spending so much time in in upping their skills it could be so much easier imagine cost for if you had to hire uh you know some and i know that you were part you you were doing the the hiring for uh, sr for the group and you know you were going to different institutions but you know what if you really knew who to pick and that can easily be done through an ai tool so i think it's about both ways i wouldn't blame institutions and i wouldn't blame corporates but somewhere people have to take responsibility we are spending so much uh on on the csr budget but this is really about our future citizens it's about our future employees why is it that we can't do this so i think we need to step up and some way being being be a little conscientious in providing these opportunities to students are then on on the on the on the role of institution number one is that if you look at the kind of research and the kind of knowledge that is being dished out in some of the uh, business management schools where which are the nurseries of the professionals which are coming out uh let me share this information that actually harvard had done a study a few years ago where they found that actually the entire knowledge base dished out in management colleges are based on only 25 fundamental researches which were done from david distance's time to goldman's time when they were talking about uh, emotional intelligence so there are only limited number of theories of original research on which the entire syllabus is designed now when these original theories and ideas were discussed it was a different world possibly if you compare with metaverse it is like developing a syllabus in the mohanjodaro times and trying to apply it in the metaverse time all right so we are outdated the reality is we are outdated but because it is focused on current jobs and not necessarily future jobs maybe that will continue for a short while but if you really want to create the resourcing of the organizations and resourcing of the talent pool in the world to be able to ready and cope with the metaverse challenges i think the universe of education not necessarily from colleges but from school levels the syllabus is have to change it is now happening i see a lot of coding being stressed in different schools children going through this coding experiences and things like that these are only fundamental steps very very initial lilliputian steps that they are taking but likewise the entire universe of education where inputs are given to students has to change greatest problem we have is that if this session was to be debated with the faculty non it faculty i'm sure most faculty members would not really be able to contribute to the concept and idea of metaverse and how it will apply now that is the kind of faculty that is generating knowledge based students which are passing out from universities so therefore you can blame the students the question is not only the syllabus not only the faculty all need to be upskilled totally to be able to ready them effectively otherwise those jerky systems happen i can tell you eight or nine major changes that will come in hr areas at some point of time you have the time and let me know i will tell you what are the major changes that will happen in hr space okay so sure. and doctor yeah doctor i was coming to you from a technology perspective how do you see the new age uh, uh, student uh, you know responding to these new things because they they get to hear about metaverse either they read it on in newspapers but i doubt they get to see it in the in, in their institutions um to me yeah okay um see uh, students are not the best entry point for them the most best and the easiest entry point for them in the metaverse is see gaming like we cannot deny it actually like game is gaming is a one area where most of the people already exposed to it actually most of the young children already exposed to it it is now we have to educate to them uh, the metaverse in a different style to them that what are the merits of it rather than talking about the demerits to them when they already experience gaming and they understood the virtual reality and the virtual world and they also know the currencies the trading and all these things they are aware of it now we have to put in a kind of a structure to the curriculum like as what dr adil rightly was like you know, hitting the nail on the head like if the faculties who are going to be participating in these kind of a discussions like how much understanding they carry on these kind of a things is the first question then students are not to be blamed 
So that's where the technology and you know other areas, people who understand the problem statement and you know and put an empathy to uh, towards the faculties and to the students. We have to create the course structures. We have to create the you know the uh, syllabus, and we have to uh, explain to them on a more on a practical scenario rather than a more on a theoretical uh, way. This will enhance you know the the people you know knowledge rather than more of a subject and understanding a theory. I, they will be more exposed to the practical uh, thing because if you look at the students getting generated in India, like you know if you have must have seen the people who have passed B computer science. they will enroll for a computer science course after the four year degree like no like that's something really a very surprising thing which is happening why not they study that for, you know computer science in the four years like uh, what is that you know they were doing all the four years then like you know the big question mark which is you know uh, raising our eyebrows then like you no know, why that and that is leading giving an opportunity for other computer uh, you know coaching centers to train them that's okay fine but advancement of technology and metaverse this is where it should be Rightly applied, it should be a right mix there. Actually, the right mix should be there. It should not be overwhelmed with too many, too much of you know metaverse, you know virtual reality and augmented there. Then it will spoil the entire thing. It it should be a a measured one uh, going into the system where how this theory it is transformed into the practical thing. That has to be explained with the uh, concept there. And I think that will do wonders. That's that's what the uh, understanding. So, uh, in fact, Kostu, there are nine particular areas in which students need to be prepared so that they are ready at the college level to be ready for metaverses. Number one is virtual technologies. Yes. Number two, virtual reality platforms. Exposure to virtual reality platforms. Number three, the entire gaming technology. the machine learning technology people understand machine learning very superficially but it's yeah. entire detailing of machine learning then 3d graphics how do 3d graphics work what are dg currencies what are blockchains and integrated blockchains and public blockchains and private blockchains augmented reality and science of holographics unless and until our students get an exposure to this their readiness will be limited now how do you do that how do you give exposure that's creativity of how universities prepare themselves exactly and then just one more point adding to what you know doctor said like see um, when we say uh, construction of a house like you no know, uh, there it, it involves an architectural design first and then the structural engineering coming in place then the civil engineering coming in place the electrical engineering coming in place all these things constitutes and then the house is getting constructed actually likewise in metaverse there are various technologies and various engineering lying behind that actually so one has to go through that and understand what is that augmented reality is going to do what is virtual reality is going to do what is iot is going to do what is ai is going to do what is cryptocurrency going to do what is their contribution there which is going to be the foundation which is going to be the building block if we structure a program like that to the young minds like you know, then they will understand and build the uh, solutions according to it is what In the manner in what I come look at it actually. Great, uh, Tanaya. Actually, uh, when you look at India and HR <coughs> managers of India and their adaptability, you know they've adapted beautifully to uh, technology when COVID happened. And actually, COVID was, I guess, one of the most, uh, you know, it it is it is that phase in Indian uh, or uh, in the in 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 the in the corporate world where organizations adapted to technology the best. Or why organizations, even countries. So it was it was that phase where you know we we actually the entire organ the country and the organizations actually moved from you know to from to virtual reality in the real sense. And HR actually were the architects of it. How do you see think uh, you know you know go, going forward because that that is where the the HR function really got its. it's 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 what and where the ceo started to look at hr function differently how do you see the ceos looking at hr going forward what is it that they are expecting out of hr now differently now that they have seen that they really became, were the transforming agents for the organizations because that was the that was the time when hr really played a solid strong support role to the to the business and and they kept the people together what do you think about it so then i over to you so before i begin again i will uh, give my little two cup two bits to the last question which was there i think i'd like to be very very positive because i think today's youth uh, is by nature uh, you know they are at very very adaptable and uh, you know intuitionally 
they're able to change between platforms and technologies. If you see a little fellow, you know, you give him, a, you know, these days parents give their little ones, you know, maybe even a one-year-old a tablet to play on, right? So I think it's it's part of the evolution, the human evolution of the brain that is happening that, because of which I think students today, you know, immaterial of whatever the teachers might say, they are e- able to understand that there is a new technology which is coming in I don't know very few, I don't know any child who does not do gamification or who's not into games, right? Uh, so whether, whether you know, the institution does it or not, but I think it's a bit about the environment and the environment that one is in. So the environment actually uh, ensures that, you know, we are able to adopt and adapt. Similarly, coming to why the CEO started looking at HR differently, because HR stepped up. In terms of adapting to that change and to the technology and to the environment to ensure that they were stepping up their game. Uh, having said that, you know, how do CEOs look at human resources from going forward? It depends really on the kind of organization that one is in and what is the stage of that organization. I'd be foolish to say that, look, one size fits all because, you know, promoter driven companies have a very different mindset from a professionally run to a multinational. But the good news is that a lot of HR folks are becoming CEOs, you know. So today it could be Lena Nair, it could be Adil's friend, uh, Mr. Santra Mishra. So, so today a lot of uh, uh, HR professionals are becoming c- professional CEOs. And I think it's, it's what is it that distinguishes an HR manager or an HR function from a, a business function or a CEO function? I think it's about the understanding of numerical numbers. Okay. Apart from that, I I think anybody who's a manager is actually first a people manager and then his functional manager. And that is where human resources plays a very, very big part. All the people think that, you know, people can come and become human resources managers. I don't think so. There is a lot of training that goes in, which is one is which you have in classrooms. The other is which, which you do through experience, which... You know, if you just transfer somebody by virtue of his function, yes, he probably will be able to adapt. But I'm not very sure he has the depth and the wit to be able to understand the function and do what is right for the organization. It's just a quick fix. So I think the CEOs today are looking at human resources as their partners or business partners where they are able to share their thoughts, are able to say what is the direction that they want for the business how do they make the people move? Because everything else is the same. So, so it's just the people which is the difference. And that's what makes or breaks the organization. So Tanaya, as my mentee, I can joke with you and I'll say that I think you and I need to have a coffee chat on this. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so just taking a clue out of this, uh, uh, Adil, uh, there is a question for you. In terms of uh, when you look at HR and we look at uh, metaverse coming in, we look at virtual world, we are, we are today doing a call out Zoom. Uh, do you think that the whole human touch, which we used to promote so much uh, through our careers, is, is going away? And has technology really dis- disrupted? Because today, the, the, the whole, when you speak to millennials, their their whole, uh, today when you look at hiring somebody, the first question is, uh, whether it is hybrid, whether it is, do I work from office? Can I work from home? I will not travel. So it actually becomes that, you know, sometimes you feel whether you're losing that touch with the, you know, up with the forthcoming employee. Actually, touches right now, if it is being perceived as not required, is a very, very wrong analysis of the situation. In fact, what is required because of depersonalization of the relationship between employees, organizations and the role of HR, what soon they are going to miss is the human touch. All right, because there is no way. And until we get a augmented reality, which will be able to feel people through artificial intelligence, there is an economic evaluation of situations, we are able to understand uh, the employee value propositions on the basis of uh, uh, meta world, digital transactions, etc. Till that time, the human touch is going to be more and more required. See, the job that an employee does has a mechanical expectation and has an emotional expectation. So the emotional expectation because of metaverse is not going away. 
So that will have to be provided a hundred times over to be able to get better engagement, to be able to understand people, to be able to offer value propositions, which people want, even if they are operating from their homes, there are certain EVPs they will expect. So that is the role. So all the old jobs that will go away will lead to opening of new jobs, which will be dealing much more closer with people, their emotions, their engagement, their touch, their empathy, the critical elements, which really makes it a human resources organization and not a personnel management organization. So, uh, Dr. Ravi, uh, uh, over to you on this one. Uh, as, as you see, technology is actually disrupting a lot of roles. You can see, how do you see employee contracts moving? How do you see the traditional employees looking at technology and, 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 by, and you know, uh, how do you see this? Because if you look at the education system not supporting it so much, corporate world is wanting to adapt it, uh, adapt uh, towards technology faster than what you think. How is the individual who is sitting outside looking at this and how do you see this employment contracts and work culture changing with technology? Certainly. Like, it, is, it is going to be like you know, a big shift is going to happen. Um, basically, the employers, the organization, they have to go through a cultural shift, which is going to happen very soon and already happened. Like, you know, because we talk about, you know, the employment contract, there is something called gig economy, which already exists, like, uh, which started even before the uh, pandemic, like, uh, people were not sticking to one job. And also because of the platforms evolved, like speakies of the world and Polas and Ubers, and people found that being more easy for them to do a task based, you know, kind of a activity and then get paid for that and not getting tied up for a full nine to five job or a, a kind of a full week job, like full month job. That has already happened. So so now what what should happen is like, you know, what I'm looking at the way I, I'm looking at is any anything which is coming in new in this world, like you know, what my experience, I've seen that people will allow that to grow in the manner or in the speed it should grow actually. Like that that's how things will evolve much faster. And you know, what happened in technology world, like you know, when the mobile device came in, uh, like, you know, there is no governance or there is no limitations. Like the technology advancement was so fast that you no, know, the touch phones started to come in like very soon. Likewise, like in metaverse world, like you no, know, in the world, like the employment contracts and all, which is going to be there in, in our system, like what we have an HR system, there is something called employment type, whether it's a permanent or a temporary or a kind of a contract, which is already there. It exists. like now it is going to be like an hour based uh, time, a time based time bound, which is going to happen. And the employers, as I what, as I said in the beginning, the contracts, what they're going to put in, is going to be modified or created according to the new way of working, which is going to happen for sure. And as also the, uh, the governance part, the employer should be framing a new governance for these kind of you know, job, which is going to be created in the near future, which is going to happen. Because like how a full-time job a governance has been created, for a part-time job, the governance has been created. Likewise, a new job which is going to come in, uh, the employers will allow it to go much faster. And then they will, at one stage, they all converge and create a kind of a system where how to govern all these things and bring all these things into a control. That that will bound to have. That is bound to happen. Uh, that's a, that's what I see in the manner in what you know, the job is going to happen. This what cost. Great, Tanaya. Uh, with millennials, there there are there are millennials, and they have got the they have got strong choices. How do you see their mindsets changing now, and how do you see the, they look they their what is their outlook towards a new workplace? Okay, so let me just uh, again go back to the question which was there before. I think uh, the organizations are all about future ready and agile. I think every organization is looking at what kind of employee is going to come in. So, you know, and today it is not about boxing employees into fixed temporary or contract. Today, you also have seat sharing, right, where two people are, you know, uh, wanting to do one job. So, you know, so the, obviously you have to stitch the contract slightly differently, right? So, uh, you know, for, for some, there are something called the liquid workforce. The liquid workforce is nothing where, you know, where people come in, do a particular job as part of the job enlargement and they go away. You know, there is probably a kind of a bonus. Uh, so I think the way we stitch contracts, the way we are designing compensation is all going to change. Right. So I think uh, 
it's uh, you know one size fits all you know so it's it's like it, in the education system now they have hybrid system five year of integrated course you know so for instance they don't go to the students don't go to college at all and they're busy preparing for their uh, you know iits and whatever and and uh, getting the certification right so in terms of coming back to your question in terms of the mindsets of the millennials i think uh, uh, they have a very curious mind they want to learn very quickly they are very impatient uh, from my experience uh, if if in a room full of uh, you know we used to hire about 50000 in one of my organizations that i worked in and if you ask them you know so how many of you want to become uh, ceos in one year you know you'll probably have you know many hands going up so patience is something which is lacking in uh, the millennials i think some of the things which which would be takeaways from the audience which is here is one is that you need to have patience because you know i have twin boys both working uh, in in corporates and they think everything is going to happen in rapid fire you know so everything is going to happen immediately okay so the expectations is is very very high so i would want uh, all of us young audience sitting here to have a little bit of a you know a cool mindset and a little bit of patience b uh, or or two is adapt adapt to uh the environment that you are in because you're not going to be in a college cafeteria anymore you're going to be responsible professionals coming in so you know the casual attitude is something which needs to go the third is you know wanting to do and getting your hands dirty you know people today most of what i find the millennial generation don't want to get their hands dirty they want you know that everybody wants to be in an ac environment in the corporate office you know with the laptop and that's it that's not how you how any one of us sitting here came up we had to really dirty our hands and do a lot of not such pleasant work before we landed where we are and then also there's a lot of work that we do which not necessarily that we that we like but so it's about understanding that you have to get your hands dirty and last but not the least learn very very quickly because you you everybody you know look at adil adil is constantly reading and he's completely up to speed same with dr ravi or yourself also so it's about understanding what is the need of the organization and adapting and learning to that organization so those are some of the four bullet points that i'd like to leave uh, great i think yeah uh, custom as always can i contradict uh, tanaya and tanaya we <laughs> certainly need a starbucks coffee meeting on this coffee can you order so number one is uh, don't learn to quickly learn learn to quickly unlearn that is one of the yeah. most important thing because we are today finding difficulties because of what we call neuro convergence all right because over a sustained period of time the world has been thinking in a certain pattern and that pattern of thinking we have inducted through bringing up nurturing parents nurturing certain neuro convergence uh, teachers uh, focusing on neuro convergence etc etc as a result of which you are an output of convergence of neurotic behaviors neurological behaviors which have uh, gone into making you the person you are now that is what makes you successful in what you are doing today but future being a totally different world and the entire pattern of thinking has to be so much more different can you imagine you are not going to be operating through one dimension but also simultaneously with a so called metaverse dimension of digital nature in the third dimension at that point of time what you need to master is not neuro convergence but neuro divergence because if you are not ready and prepared for neuro divergence then you will have a lot of mental health issues you will continuously suffer from neurosis you will lead to anxiety seriousness outcome prep and performances will be impacted there will be schizophrenic effects there will be stress because there are two characteristic behaviors required your mean is expected to behave in a certain way in the digital space versus your reality is supposed to behave in a different way and there will be all those sleep deprivity and all because your digital mini is operating and so there are huge number of behavioral problems and mental problems you will have if you do not train yourself in neuro divergence and unlearn neuro convergence and that is where i have a dis- uh, disagreement with dr kamar yeah. great so we we have two questions from the audience and i think we just have we've been told that we've got 3 minutes left so the two questions that are are, are from the uh, the the audience are with the dei policies in play, work play, uh, workplace it is becoming challenging to achieve inclusion and neurodiversity in physical workplaces 
how do you think metaverse would be dei and neurodivergence friendly the question is to me or tanaya no they they have kept it open so anybody anybody is free to it. so adil you can start so it actually uh, metaverse will be actually a leveler because you are not worried about which gender is handling it you are not worried at which time of the day things are getting handled so all those limitations which came upon old organizations or traditional organization in traditional dimensions which stopped the employment of diversity actually diversity need not be even known you don't need to know you just need to find out who is the competent person to be adding value in your value chain therefore actually metaverse is a great leveler of diversity yeah tanaya would you like to ask dr ravichandran yeah so see uh, uh, it's perfect because in the virtual world like you have the avatars where you need not represent what you are like you no know, how you are looking and all these things like there is a common you can bring in a kind of a uh, your own uh, way of looking at it so that doesn't the diversity or the equality or inclusivity actually as what dr ravi <coughs> said it's a level of, like metaverse is going to actually it's a positive thing which has been brought in like an no, organization going to embrace and people who have suffered of going through this kind of a thing certainly i see a lot of relief and you know, even the policies the hr for the organization what they have to face and to overcome all these kind of uh, issues and uh, you know problems in the organization i think this will take care of it is what the answer actually so again uh, let's understand you know the neurodiversity is referring to basically how does your brain really react or what is your cognitive ability in, and the, the good news about metaverse is you can be anybody that you want to okay. it is really what is metaverse it is about living the life that you want it is i mean while we have tried to you know we are talking about the corporate side of it but let's understand what is it that is doing today you can be anybody that you want you can do exactly what you want so it's about your pig, you know so so all of you you know who are students and are and are part of the gamification world it's really a gamification in in the 3d world you can be anybody you can you can be the you know the the monarch who that that for all uh, you know that uh, for everything that you want you can do anything you can you can buy land you can sell land you can just be your own you know your own boss so it is about living or reliving your imagination that's why metaverse was created it was created to live the desires that that you were you had within or what you could not achieve in the real world so this gave you a fictional world to live your dreams and i think we are we are thank you so much actually we are, we, we are you know at the time uh, i would have loved to go on and i have a list of what 10 more questions but it was wonderful uh, it was a it was really a very enriching discussion and thank you so much uh, dr adil dr tanaya and dr ravi chandra it was an absolute enriching experience for me as well and i'm sure the all the 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 guests the the audience would have been thrilled to to have listened to all three of you great uh, hr professionals and technology professionals and thank you for being a part of this uh, highly interactive and 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 a very um, you know interesting topic that we had on metaverse and neurodivergence thank you so much for being there and i really uh, you know thank you so much all three of you yeah. thank you faster thank, thank you everybody thank you thank you very much thank you